Hey everybody, and welcome to the next Smoke and Flame Quick Tip. Now, this one is uh, it's going to be geared to way more towards flame, but this is going to be all about using action to uh, for a look development. So, um, you know, over the last, I'd say, two or three versions um, of Flame, uh, we've gotten so much love in the action world. We've got camera effects, light box, uh, matchbox in there now. And, um, you know, I'm going to be honest, I'm notorious for sticking with my old ways and, um, you know, living in batch. And I don't know how many times you guys have picked up a setup, but, um, you know, if you look in the action, usually, usually it's something like this. There's, you know, you're just plunking stuff in 3D space and that's kind of it. And you're layering stuff up. And, you know, if you are just doing it for that, it's kind of sad because there is so much that we can do in um, in action now. So um, if I just go Alt to, um, you see these were backgrounds for some stuff I did at Tendril. Um, so the bottom one is using pretty much the traditional way you'd um, you'd work when you're look diving and um, creating backgrounds. So you know I've got my background. I'm doing some some color correcting, I'm doing some pixel spreading just to soften stuff up. Again, just some color grading some edges on the mats and again this thing just had a camera move tracked in right um, you know nothing fancy it's just exactly what you'd expect and then you know like a lot of things um, post that was then depth of field so you know we used our Z pass um, we added extra outputs you know which is great with action and this one was just just for these rocks because again added some bloom and this pass, this uh, color guy here is again using the rock pass, and again that's just pulling that down. And you know you would do this before the depth of field, obviously. Um, and then this guy here is just adding some some light source, kind of dulling it down, but keeping that light source. And again, an extra little blur on top. And then you know usually you'd have a grain, and again. Um, the there's nothing wrong with this don't don't get me wrong um there's always a place for this and you know i'm not i'm not saying one way is better than the other i'm just saying um it's important to remember what has been added in there to make this a lot easier for us so you know i'm sure a lot of you will agree flames massive strong point is client driven sessions and having someone with you while you're look deving and creating stuff and this particular workflow can be kind of slow um, and you know I'm not talking down on the software but you know if we go into two up go over here set this as our context go to spacebar one sorry spacebar one and we go back here you know we gotta tweak that guy in context I mean I know it's not super super bad um, but again you know we can always tweak and do it like this um, and then we you know, can jump back here and we can view the blur and tweak down here Again, it's it can take a lot more time when you're when you're tweaking. Now, up here is the exact same setup with super similar results. Um, with what you can see already is a lot more simple um, in tree form and even in action form. So let's just pull this guy down for a little bit. Let's have a look. So we've got exact same sources. Um, instantly, this is already a lot cleaner because we gotten rid of that guy because we're using instancing in action so let's have a look so again we got the same same tree except we have camera effects being used which are great and we're using some match boxes to uh to comp stuff in so let's first of all uh hopefully you have all played with camera effects and they're great but we'll have a look a little bit more of a look at them in a second I'm just gonna hide those you can see again we're seeing this exactly for what it is. Um, but the great bit with this is because this is all here and you know, it lives here, it's a lot easier to interact in here than kind of viewing stuff in context and you know, jumping out from batch. It's just, again, it's a very specifically designed look, look dev kind of interactive tool that um, can really make your life easier. So again, I'm, I'm out here and you know, this guy was literally just played with the game. So again, you can see, we can see this interactively and you know this guy was again just if i toggle these on and off so you can again you can hide these it's easy just like you would bypass and again it's all that's happening some parallax just to soften these edges using like pixel spread and then 
we look at these, um, and we again the other thing too to remember with um, camera effects is if we select those and then swipe down, they have their own priority editor, editor too, which is um, interesting. Um, and the same goes for uh, you know our images like you're used to, and also the matchbox is based off the diffuse. Again, um, once you know what you're doing in here, it's it makes a lot of sense. So. Um, let's look down here and we'll see what the base, the lowest layer is Stingray Depth of Field. So if I just toggle that on and off, you see, it's doing a not too bad job. And I'm going to do spacebar F4 and just Alt around. So you can see this is our scene. This is, you know, we've got four planes, we've got the background, we've got these three guys placed in Z. Um, you know, Stingray Depth of Field, if I just use the viewing, and again, all that's happening is, you know, you can see. The, the Z has been tweaked, just so it's a little bit further, and we've got more of a sharp fall off. If we turn that off, and then, again, these have just been tweaked a bit. And, you know, again, um, I quite like what Stingray Depth of Field does, personally. Um, now, the next thing that we're doing in here is, again, we're adding our bloom. And again, we've just literally just played with threshold and exposure. And again, it's there nice and easy. Now, another one that we've added in, this is our little uh, pass here for the for the rocks. Now, the other thing to note too is um, the selective, if we go in here, um, each of these guys are gonna have different controls, especially with camera effects um, as opposed to matchbox in terms of the way we can do selection. So, so you're gonna get more options generally in the color tools and the tools that are built as camera effects and to be used for a camera effects. So this one right now is using depth to um, to use it. So if we go selective viewing, you can see we're, we don't even have to draw G-mask, we're just selective viewing that based off, based off this. So again, if I toggle that on and off, you can see how we can affect um, our guy very, very easily. Um, now we've got a whole bunch of other options too. Um, you know, another thing too that um, has been introduced with this version um, if I just go here and go node bin and go matchbox, I'll go out all nodes and then matchbox actually. And we'll just go into the camera effects and let's just do, let's do color correct 3D selective. So this one, it is using this one, but I'm just gonna start with a blank slate. So I'm just gonna hide these, hide, hide, and we'll use this guy. And let's go to selective and we're gonna go to object ID. So if we just click on this display object ID, this is another way, again, um, to treat it like an adjustment layer, like it wouldn't After Effects or something. Because you know that if you're doing this blur uh, pre, you're copying and pasting it. Um, if you have mixed resolutions, you have to do it for each one. Or, you know, like this case, if you're doing it after, you're doing it outside of the context of the main comp. So you're always in here usually setting this guy's context. It's just, again, can be a lot more fiddly. And again, there's no right or wrong way, but this is just to kind of trigger and show you guys that this does exist. So I'm just gonna click in here for the second guy. Let's pick in here. And then we'll choose one more color, which is that one. So if we go, okay, turn that off and just go to master. And again, if we play with that, you can see we can control that uh, nice and easy. Um, no need to draw masks, and again, that's using a nice new feature, which is object ID. Um, so yeah, it's it's an awesome awesome tool, and you know we can play with softness too if we want. Um, but let's get rid of that guy. So again, um, if we go Alt two, if we turn those two back on, again, there's our color selective. The second one is that little background color selected, and if we look at selective. Go selective viewing, you see we're just using the sphere world and it's just been placed in Z and uh, X and Y and you know playing with the radius. So that's the other thing. Um, these aren't that bad, these setups to pick up. Um, again, if we look at this compared to this, um, sure, they're both their own set of evil, kind of. But again, um, the fact that this all lives in here and you can be monitoring this with the client there and you know you can quickly hide these on and off, um, you know, we can quickly, we're in action so we can, you know, quickly change priority and, you know, bring it to the front, even though we don't want to, but we'll push out to the back. That's where this, you know, becomes powerful. So again, we got another little color correct, which is our, if we look at the layer priority again, by swiping down, that's our second last guy. And then 
we've got our final little kiss of blur and this guy isn't even um, a camera effects and that's the other thing that um, a lot of people might forget is you don't just have to use matchbox and apply them to diffuses um, they can be applied to just you know as a camera effects within reason sometimes I'm pretty sure there has to be something added in by the devs but um, most of the default stuff will work um, in you know normal thingy so we'll, I'll try and prove a point um, I'm just gonna add select the camera and go no bin matchbox and then we'll just go color correct so this is just a normal color correct and again it just works um, and this is again the option that doesn't include the shaders so you know where we get to and being able to just quickly you know toggle things on and off toggle colors on and off toggle layers on and off toggle layer priority and all living in here um, you know as a final step too if we really wanted we could just do uh, if we go regrain again we could do that from within here too um, it probably doesn't make sense actually because if we are adding aliasing it's probably not smart to add grain in but that's one of the things you would do outside personally but yeah I just um just wanted to share with you guys the the power and you know the 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 reminder that there has been all this stuff done to action to make this easier for all of us when we have clients in there and you know like I said I'm <laughs> I'm guilty of it and you know lots of others are of just sticking it with your old ways but you know it's really worth giving um, all of this new optimization that has happened in inside of action um, to allow us to do this awesome look dev I mean I haven't even touched on uh, lightbox in here as well so again there's there's so much that can be done and again imagine working with this with clients here as opposed to working with this with clients and back clicking and uh, changing priorities so unpiping and choosing where you would put again it it's just way more efficient when you have someone there to to just quickly do this in action you know with two up so yeah that's um that's gonna be it for this quick tip guys um i hope it was useful and i hope you enjoyed it uh stay tuned for more